Ah, millions of monkeys buying typewriters and trying to plagiarize my plays. How could they? I pour my soul into each and every word. Will, my dear friend, what's the matter? It's these monkeys, Joe. They're trying to steal my thunder. Oh, Will, don't let them get to you. Your plays are masterpieces. They could never compare. Yeah, even if those monkeys can drum up a solid play, it will take them eons. Good thing there's no competition that can write plays in seconds. <coughs> uh, Will, there's uh, something else you should know. What is it? There's an AI robot that can write plays in seconds. What? An AI robot? That's it then. I'm finished. Will, don't give up. You're the true master of words. No robot or monkey could ever take that away from you. You're right. I won't let them defeat me. I'll show them who the true wordsmith is. That's the Will I know and love. Hello subscribers, and everyone else. My name is Dalpal, and have you ever had a great idea for a movie, or a TV show, or a play, but you didn't want to go through all the effort of writing it all out? I mean, come on. Writing? That's for school. And nerds. <laughs> but, it's gotta get written somehow, so let me introduce you to ChatGPT. There's a good chance you've heard of, or maybe even used ChatGPT to do stuff like learning or looking stuff up or getting some extra education, you know, just general stuff that your teachers would approve of. But to catch everyone up, ChatGPT is a text-based artificial intelligence model um, that can do basically whatever you want it to. It's made by the same people who made Dolly or Dolly 2, if you've heard of that. Basically, you feed it a prompt of some sort and then it uses its machine learning AI magic and poops out a nice fresh steamy pile of exactly what you ask for, most of the time. Look, I know what you're thinking. Dal pal, there's no way that an AI robot can make something good. It's gonna be all janky and weird. Well, I hear you, and in some cases you're definitely right. But this AI can actually come up with some pretty solid stuff. Take, for example, the intro to this video. That's right, the whole skit was written by AI. What? Yeah, I know the skit wasn't amazing, but considering it was written in seconds by a computer using AI, I mean, not too bad. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. So anyways, now that we know that ChatGPT can create a fairly decent script, I had an illustrious idea. I'm gonna get five of my friends and have them each use the AI to write an original script for a play. Then we will get together and perform these robot written plays, but with a catch. We won't read the scripts beforehand, so we'll all be caught off guard by the twists and turns that the master playwright ChatGPT writes for us. And I am just so excited to see what happens next. Welcome to the debut of AI Theater. We're here, um, ready to debut our AI plays. Um, would our playwrights slash directors please come up? Uh, clap, come on, clap guys. Clap. Awesome. These are our wonderful uh, directors slash playwrights who with the help of uh, the AI have written some lovely plays for us. Um, we also have a celebrity guest who will act with us. Um, please come out here. Whoa! Oh, it's Jenkins. Oh, it's Jenkins. Awesome. We see a teenage boy, Jim, sitting on his bed, staring at a blank notebook in front of him. He looks sad and lonely. I can't believe it's been a year since she left. Flashback to a year ago. We see Jim sitting at a table by himself with a group of pop when a group of popular kids approach him. Hey Jim, we heard you have an imaginary girlfriend. That's so lame. You should just find a real girlfriend. Back to present day. <laughs> Can't keep living like this. I need to move on. Jim starts to pack his things into a suitcase when suddenly the door to his bedroom opens <laughs> and a girl walks in. She looks exactly like the girl in Jim's memories. His imaginary girlfriend, Mia. Hi Jim, I'm back. <laughs> Jim can't believe his eyes. Mia, is that really you? Yeah, it's me. I never really left. I was just waiting for you to be ready to let me go. I'm so sorry, Mia. I should have never doubted you. 
Aww. We see Jim standing at the altar looking nervous. To you, Jim, who take me in to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death you part? I do. Do you, Mia, take Jim to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death you part? I do. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife, you may kiss the bride. Jim and Mia smiley each other kiss. <laughs> Fade to black. In the living room, we see Jim and Mia sitting on the couch, <laughs> holding hands. <laughs> Jim's family is sitting around them, looking happy and teary-eyed. I'm so happy to be part of this family. We're so proud of you, son. You found your true love. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I couldn't have done it without Mia. <laughs> <laughs> we see Jim lying in a hospital bed, hooked up to a machine that is beeping and flashing. I'm sorry, Mia. We did everything we could, but Jim's brain is just too damaged. He's in a coma. He'll never wake up. No, this can't be happening. Flashback to a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, there's a loud knock on the door. Jim answers it and sees two men in suits standing outside. We're from the Department of Imaginary Affairs. <laughs> we have a warrant to seize your imaginary girlfriend, Mia. <laughs> what? Why? Your girlfriend is causing disturbance in the imaginary realm. <laughs> she needs to be returned to her own dimension. You can't leave. I love you. I love you too, but I have to go. It's the only way to protect you. <laughs> Back to present day. I'm so sorry, Jim. I just wanted to protect you. Mia Liz leans down and kisses Jim on the forehead. In the Department of Imaginary Affairs. We see Jim sitting in a chair hooked up to another machine that is beating and flashing. Don't worry, Jim. We're just gonna extract the memories of Mia and use them to create more imaginary girlfriends for other people. You can't do this. Mia's real. Mia was just a figment of your imagination. She was never real. That's not true. I felt her love. It was real to me. The doctor ignores Jim's protest and continues to extract his memories. Flash forward to a year later. <laughs> Across from him sits his imaginary girlfriend Mia 2.0. She looks exactly like Mia, but with a few minor differences. Oh my God. What are you writing, Jim? Just some ideas for a new story. I'm a writer now. That's amazing, Jim. Thanks to you, Mia, you gave me the love and support I needed to follow my dreams. And scene. <laughs> When that gets adapted into a movie, nobody's gonna follow that. <laughs> <laughs> that timeline. <laughs> Meet David, a successful but lonely businessman. <laughs> Act two. <laughs> <laughs> David is working late one night and comes across a blank sheet of paper. Huh, just a plain old piece of paper. But as David starts to doodle on the paper, he becomes transfixed by its blank canvas, begging to be filled with his thoughts and ideas. David then becomes so obsessed with the paper that he starts carrying it everywhere. David's co-workers and friends start to worry his strange behavior and start to worry about him. You okay? I found my true love. This paper has changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> David's co-workers and his friends try to intervene and get him help, but David is convinced that the paper is his soulmate. <sighs> David's once promising life is falling apart, all because of his love for a sheet of paper. David is seen alienating himself from his friends and colleagues, spending all of his time at the paper. I can't keep leaving like this. You're just David a piece of paper. It's time for me to move on. David then makes amends with his friends and colleagues and starts to rebuild his life. It's never too late to let go of unhealthy obsessions and embrace the people and things that truly matter. <laughs> and see. <laughs> Alright, so the stage is set. Dr. Eckstein, the mad scientist with wild white hair, and his lab coat is busy at work on his lab bench. Now, Sheffield, I've been working on this toenail growth serum for months. If it works on my trusty lab chip, Bippy, it could revolutionize the nail care industry. Wow! That would be amazing, Dr. Eckstein. <laughs> Wait, did you just try to speak to me, Bippy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this serum seems to have given me the ability to speak. <gasps> I can't wait to see what other amazing things this serum can do. <laughs> 
I'm sure there will be many more discoveries to come, but for now, let's celebrate this incredible breakthrough. Oh. I wonder what other effects the serum might have. Mm. That's a good point, Chef. <laughs> I am happy with, to help with anything that you need, Dr. X. You're so polite for a chef. We're <laughs> running various tests on you. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. As the test continued, it becomes clear that the serum has not only given Bippy the ability to speak, but also enhanced his intelligence and physical abilities. We have got to get this serum out into the world as soon as possible. You're right, Sheffield. We have to start the process of getting this serum approved for use on humans as soon as possible. I'm happy to be part of this, Dr. X. <laughs> but I hope that we consider the ethical implications of using this serum on humans. I know that the serum has had some amazing results so far, but we have to consider the possible negative side effects as well. Yes, Dr. Epstein. We've seen some reports of aggressive behavior. That doesn't sound good to me. I don't want to lose control of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Bippy starts making strange noises and clutching at his head. Epstein and Sheffield look on in shock as Bippy's head begins to grow and more. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Epstein, what's happening to Bippy? I don't know, Sheffield. It must be some kind of negative side effect of the serum. <laughs> Bippy's head continues to grow and morph until it splits into two heads, each with its own set of eyes and mouth. <laughs> ah! Oh no, what's happening to me? <laughs> we have to do something, Dr. Eckstein. This is a disaster. You're right, Sheffield. We have to find a way to reverse the effects of the serum on Bippy. Please, Dr. Eckstein, do something. I don't want to be like this forever. Don't worry, Bippy. I'll do everything in my power to help you. Suddenly, Bippy's second head begins to shake and tremble violently. <laughs> Exton and Sheffield look on in horror as the second head explodes, <laughs> showering the room in blood and gore. <laughs> what have you done? It hurts me, get stuck! <laughs> Hang on, Bippy, we'll get help! Exton and Sheffield rush to get Bippy medical attention, but it is too late. Bippy dies from his injuries. No! A victim of the dangerous and unpredictable serum. As Exton and Sheffield mourn the loss of their beloved lab chimp, it becomes clear that the cost of scientific advancement can sometimes be too high. Seed fades to black as they pledge to be more cautious and considerate of their future endeavors. <laughs> <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> The local hospital. John is lying in a hospital bed, his foot heavily bandaged. Sarah is sitting by his side, holding his hands and looking worried. Dr. Patel is examining John's foot with a concerned expression on her face. I'm sorry, John, but I'm afraid your toe has fallen off. What? How is that even possible? Is there a cure? We're working on it, but it's going to take some time. We need to isolate you to prevent the spread of the disease. Dr. Patel, I need to ask you a few questions. Have there been any other cases of this mysterious disease? We've had three other patients with similar symptoms. It's very rare, but it appears to be contagious. Do you have any leads on the source? We're still investigating. I'm going to do everything I can to find a cure. I'm a nursing student. <laughs> Maybe I can assist in the oh. research. <laughs> we can use all the help we can get. Several weeks pass, and the group has made little progress in finding a cure for the disease. John's condition has worsened, and he has lost several more toes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sarah is at her wit's end. Detective Roberts has also hit a dead end in his investigation. We tried every treatment we can think of, and nothing seems to be working. Suddenly, John sits up in his bed and starts speaking frantically. <laughs> I know what's causing the disease! What are you talking about, John? <laughs> I went on a hiking trip last week and I found this strange plant growing in a remote area of the forest. It, I took a few samples and brought them back to study. I think the plant is the source of the disease. This could be the break we're looking for! Where's the plant now? It's in my lab at the university. <laughs> the group quickly has John's lab in the, at the university and finds a strange plant. Upon, upon further examination, they discover that the plant contains a toxic chemical that is causing people's toes to fall off. With this information, they are finally able to create a cure for the disease and save John and all the other patients. In the end, it was John's curiosity and determination to find the cause of the disease that ultimately led <laughs> to the Giving me the credit, I got nothing. <laughs> I thought you brought this. It's like, like, my fault. <laughs> Great job, Wait, do I get my toes back? Am I cured with my toes back? Or just... Your toes are good. Yeah, <laughs> no. no. A 
Up next, I will be presenting my play, Celery Mayhem in Rabbitopia. So this video is getting to be way too long, so if you want to see my play along with a bonus play, then let me know down in the comments below and maybe I'll release those as their own separate video. At the end of the day, I think the AI wrote some pretty cohesive and as sometimes unintentionally funny scripts. But there's still some work to do before learning models like ChatGPT can pump out some creative original scripts without really creative prompts. So you're safe for now, Shakespeare. Oh, jolly good show. Anyways, I'm Dal Pal. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked the video or if you're afraid of the artificial intelligence revolution. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Peace. It's these monkeys, Joe. They're trying to steal my thunder. Oh wait, I'm not doing my British voice. RIP, hang on.